gonna do something fun. We're gonna yeah. re rehash an old adventure that was played with three dip two two extra di- no two different other people. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, You're gonna I'm get it. it. You're gonna get it. So they're gonna know exactly what was going on on the previous adventure. I I, don't, I feel like I don't even need to recap at all. That's right. <laughs> well, I mean, they've watched every episode. They're not on. So ah, yes. Well, we know Adam has for sure. Of course, he's the biggest fan. I won. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. So. So Adam, why don't you recap the story yeah, so yeah. far I, of what's I, I happened with of, these cowboy well, I, characters? I lost my my book that had the adventure in it. How so, did yeah. you lose a book? D- easily. <laughs> <laughs> did you burn it? Uh, no, nothing that. Like, cool. Did you lose it in I your probably... house, or like, did you leave it at your friends when you were playing D anD? d Probably that one. Okay. Yeah. So we, it's just like at Evan's. We house. usually drink a lot. Oh, it is at Evan's house. You're right. <laughs> actually, I left it there last time. You mm. you nailed it. Kelly knows you better than you do. Yeah, wow. I know. I, well, what do I win? I want a prize. Oh, uh, you win. Uh, just, just a great, a good compliment. You're good. You're a good guy. Thanks, man. It's <laughs> the nicest thing anyone's ever yeah, said that, to me. That's good. That's the nicest thing. You're a good guy. Yeah. I will do a recap. That's okay. fair. Um, so, uh, in this fantasy cowboy adventure land that we were in uh, last time. Uh, the only what's what's your character's name again, Kelly? Oh well, the character that I was playing was. Are you playing McCullough. someone different? Well, I I did write up a new character. Oh, okay. Well, okay. They all they all died. The last three adventurers. They 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 got to this town. It was yeah. Um. No no no. He's playing a repeat character. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. All right. We're doing a really good job making this not confusing. Yes, absolutely <laughs> solid. Okay, so. Yeah, you guys, you guys, uh, you were in this caravan, you're going to a town, um, where it had magical powers, where the more rough and tough and root and tootin' you were, the more magically imbued with powers you became. What kind of powers are we talking about? We're ta- uh, we're talking, we're talking, uh, well, no one actually tried to use any of the magical powers, so we have zero <laughs> I idea. I think we got powers, I thought we just kind of regenerated our injuries and our diseases no no it was Wolverine. mentioned multiple times that it, it gave you magical powers but no one ever it, it like so we just had to try like arbitrary magic well no i i told you it made you like be able to do man manly manly tough guy stuff mm. better so oh okay if you tried to do like something like you, so know, you could like, like drink beer and smoke a pipe extra good or yeah what? or like you're like or yeah just something like it's like i it's like there's a uh you know the door is locked, and you're like, "Well, I just, just kick it I, open. I just put my thumb in my, my my belt strap and I kick it down like that kind of stuff." Mm. So yeah, I did a tough guy thing after I got powers. I went and crouched behind someone and uh, allowed them to get pushed over over me. That's the toughest thing you can do. Yeah, that was it, very tough. It was tough. And you did, they did die. So yeah, mm. so that was a uh, the previous uh, batch of uh, adventurers, and so we still have. What what was your character's name? Flint Steel. Flint Steel um, has somehow managed to survive uh, in the town, uh, and I guess a collateral incident that happened when uh, your previous character, um, Tug McCuller, mm-hmm. Tug McCuller, uh, he was just fe- a fe- enfeebled and diseased orphan, right? Yeah, he had scrofula and. <laughs> Uh, I think that was the main thing with scrofula. Uh, <laughs> Give me a uh, common symptom of scrofula. You get these big, uh, it's like a tuberculosis symptom, and you get mm. all these, uh, like, buboes on your, like, skin and shit. You, That yeah. sucks. Yeah. So, we'll just say he, he died of terminal scro- scrofulosis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he is no longer with us. That's right. Plus that orphan's heart. Um and then uh, there was another character. I forgot their name. Whatever. They're dead as well. Jessamine Goldie Ear, uh, Dirty Ears Goldbloom. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. She got her ears cleaned. Yeah. And No, she's not dead. She, she, she rode off into the sunset. She rode off into the sunset. She's yeah, doing she great now. She completed her quest. And I also, uh, she also gained a tooth, I believe. Hmm. She only had two. She gained several teeth. Oh, she was wow. doing great. Yeah, that's right. She was. So, yeah. Well, uh, how about we just introduce our new batch of characters and we'll hook them up with... Uh, Good old no, oh, is that Flint, kind of role playing? Steel. Oh yeah. Well, this this is a cowboy adventure. There's nothing not, nothing tougher than fucking a dude. <laughs> what about fucking a dude in a Ford? That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of my horse, Ford. <laughs>
Oh dear. Mine's Ford F one fifty. Yeah, Ford F one fifty. Yes. <laughs> He's lifted. <laughs> Yes. I gave him an extra set of knees. Exactly. All of the big God. like GMC fans that are listening are going to be like, oh, she thinks it's tough to fucking afford, eh? <laughs> Fuck it's way knee. tougher to fucking a Dodge Ram. <laughs> That's right. Or a, a Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ian. <laughs> I know, I know. I would love to imagine like a real redneck guy who just loves Japanese cars. Like, yeah, I drive a Honda Ridgeline, nothing tougher than the Japanese. That's right. <laughs> he's like a redneck weeb. Yeah. Oh yes, he's really into samurais and like he wears, he owns. The kitanas. only time I'm not driving my truck is when I'm Naruto running, <laughs> <laughs> which is usually to my Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> yeah, but it's jacked up really high, so he has to like do like the trampoline to bounce in kind of thing. Yeah, he has and, to do like a yeah. perfectly coordinated triple jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't, why don't you, uh, we'll do some character introductions here. Who's, who's, who's up on the roster? All right, so I'll introduce my character. Uh, so I, I, when I thought we were doing a, a standalone Cowboy Christmas, which didn't materialize, I was like, well, I gotta have a standalone Cowboy character. And, uh, oh, you know what? Let's get some Cowboy hats going. Mm. Mm, mm, yes. Mm. Everyone pull out the Cowboy hats you brought. All right. All right. So we're back after that word from our sponsors. This is the one I didn't want. All right. So my character is uh, haggard and bewildered. Uh, my background, uh, an intrusive busybody of a relative. Uh, I was prodding in my cousin-in-law's garage at a holiday party and stumbled across a time-traveling DeLorean. A little too inquisitive for my own good, I accidentally bumbled my way to traveling back to the Old West, uh, where I now find myself. So you're just a straight up modern day dude in cowboy times? A lady, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> a lady, actually. <laughs> Sorry, Haggard is a classic. Yeah. Woman's well, I, lo- name. I love to yeah. be a I love to be a Haggard character. Yeah. Right on. Dude. Yeah. So I for Plus. my uh oh, and my unique talent is my uncanny ability to redirect attention to something else. Hmm. Oh. Nice. Yes. That's good. Sweet. And uh who else have we got here? Uh, so I'm going to use the Clarence B. Butterson, uh, a stunningly handsome Southern gentleman with a drumstick bolero. You'll have to picture that in your head. It looks nice. <laughs> um, my background is I'm from an illustrious family in the Deep South, the scion of the Kentucky Fried Chicken Empire, or at least I was. <gasps> yeah, there's something scary going on there. Uh, my unique talent is that I can take a sip of gravy to power myself up. <laughs> And I keep it on my person at all times. Fuck yeah. You're like the witcher with <laughs> gravy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and your eyes turn brown. <laughs> more brown. More, more, yes. more brown. <laughs> all right. And uh, everyone, of course, is familiar with uh, Flint Steel, but why don't you just give us a little whatever's yes. written down there? Basically, I'm Flint Steel. I have a cold and rugged exterior, yet with a hint of grace and elegance. <laughs> I am a woman pretending to be a man. Uh, and also, I am a crackshot gunslinger, and I can instantly bond with any horse. Instantly. Nice. nice. Expect me to whisper into the horse's ear. Ford. <laughs> Ford. Ford. I'm going to steal your fucking Ford horse, okay? Ford horse engine. Yeah. <laughs> Ford cylinder. I don't like a horse. Ford horse. I like to drive a toot horse because it looks more like a sports. Sport yeah. horse, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sports horse, yeah, two doors better than four doors, yeah, yeah, they always say that. All right, so, uh, we're gonna say that this, uh, this is after the kerfuffle that happened outside of the saloon where, uh, wretched Regina, uh, was murdered. Uh, she was the leader of the Viking crew, I believe, and, uh, yeah, you managed to do like the old, uh, junior high trick where you like crawled up behind her and pretended and uh your friend pushed her and, and she hit her head a rock and she died wow and uh that's where we left out left left off last time so we're gonna say that like the crowd kind of like wow you real tragedy wretched regina she was she was the best of us and uh they all kind of did this this whole thing they put the hats to their chest and, like looked down and uh one guy like kicks a a little patch of dust and he's like god damn god damn and then they all just kind of like put their hats back on and they uh, wander back into nice. Good job, guys. Mm-hmm. Wander back into the saloon. Flint Steele's just uh, kind of like taking this all in and is uh, 
previous traveling companions had uh one died of scruff scrofulosis like and the other had uh left because she had cured her ailments but uh two people seem to linger as uh the crowd disperses and it's you haven't described yourself physically but me yeah. oh i'm haggard bewildered yeah haggard bewildered yeah, yeah so there's haggard bewildered kind of and, dressed like this and buttersby and you guys are just kind of like taking in the scene and you're all standing uh standing in the street right now so yeah. this this is just after that fight that happened in the previous yes. story so you're telling me that like immediately after the fight like tug mccollar just dropped dead it was the sheer weight of being tripped upon that like killed Tug oh, McCullough. Man, he, so was he was getting truly, better too. That was truly so... an enfeebled orphan. <laughs> God damn, couldn't even handle getting tripped over. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, I think he like took a shot of whiskey and almost died. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess I guess there were some ups and some downs there. Yeah, Kelly, really quick, you're wearing this uh, in the the game. Uh, did you put this on before you got into your glory? <laughs> yes. <laughs> or did you find this just like laid about and swap clothes? Oh, oh, before I got into the DeLorean, right. Yeah. Uh, I, who that's a good question. I like to think that uh, she, she just kind of wears this because she was like, uh, you know, it's kind of like kooky and fun. Is she doing a bit at a family dinner? Uh, no, she's not the type to do bits at family dinner. She's more the type to cause drama at a family dinner. It's her, it was her ex-boyfriend's thing, and she wears it out of, like, a form of spite no one really understands, because no one there met her ex-boyfriend. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But she talked a lot about him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of that, like, oh, yeah, he was a real clown. Like, you thought this looked so cool. Well, yeah, I think it looks bad on me anyway. Oh, my God. Is it Aunt Jen? <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Susan? Susan. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, did I not say my name? I'm Aunt Susan. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> All right. God, she was so unhelpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You can be Aunt Susan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Changed my mind. She keeps, she's like traveled through dimensions. Yeah, well, it's just, in all these crazy situations. She has a way of bumbling her way into situations. Yeah, she's, she's quacky. Yeah. So uh, we're all kind of just hanging out near each other? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you're, I guess you more importantly, are really trying to get your bearings uh, of yeah, what's going on. Yeah, I feel on. like I'm, I'm standing next to Flint Steel. Because I'm kind of figuring, like, there's just something about his energy that is just feels like very welcoming and like, uh, you that, know, in, in, she's very intuitive. Yeah. And Does that, like, and Susan have a type? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. Like, it's it's a very it's it's not like a romantic connection. It's like, uh, oh, yes. I feel safe. I feel like I'm like it's my abandon my mounting abandonment complex. It was just like I feel like I could just share my wardrobe with this person. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. So, oh, I love your hat, Mister. Sorry, what was your name? The name's Flint Steel. Sure. <laughs> I'm a real man. <laughs> I'm a real man. <laughs> well, you you know what? I really appreciate you, Mister Steel, because you are very manly, and yet somehow you have this aura that's very it it's uh, it contains aspects of the sacred feminine. I've been reading a lot about it. Oh shit, that might be an anachronism. I mean. You just got, you got a great fashion sense. You got your feet in both worlds. I like it. That's my manly confidence. It lets me wear whatever I want and feel perfectly comfortable. I agree. I feel like we could share a wardrobe. Like we, I, I, I don't know. I don't have a measuring tape. Oh shit. Is that anachronism? Well, I, I don't have a <laughs> measuring uh, lasso, but I, I feel like we're almost the same size. Isn't that interesting? You're so manly. You're kind of my size. And uh, just as you guys are just like uh, talking about how manly and truly of a man uh, Flint Steele is, yeah. Uh, uh, Doctor Beans and Buttersby are like, uh, uh, they like you can see them in the distance walking towards, and uh, Doctor Beans like kind of like laughs jovially and like, <laughs> and like slaps him on the back, and he's like, "Well, as a as a fellow man of business and entrepreneurship, I think you'll just fit in just fine in this town here." There's a lot of fine folk here looking for chicken is high up on their list of things to do. <laughs> oh, I love chicken. I'm glad they have chicken in the past. I mean, the present. I'm glad we have chicken in the present. I could eat a whole chicken because I'm so manly. Wow. I, I, well, as, uh, as a man who is uh, uh, just intrigued by the very nature of this proposition, I would like to see you do that right now. Would you happen to have any chicken on your person, Buttersby? 
of the Buttersby Kentucky Fried Chicken Empire? Oh, of course, the Buttersby's. I've, everyone knows the Buttersby's living in this town, living in this period of time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Who doesn't know the Buttersby's? Well, I started nervously drinking a beer. <laughs> Sorry, who is Dr. Beans? A quick aside. Oh, yes. Dr. Beans was uh, the first person that you met uh, on the, the wagon coming into this town. Um, or Flint Steele is familiar with Dr. Beans okay. of uh, the Beans and Bullets Emporium. Gotcha. Yes. And he's a, he's kind of like a wealthy tycoon who's just just arrived to the town. What kind of beans does he sell? Uh, well, I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> no one seems to really care about Dr. Beans and the Beans Emporium. Uh, beans and bullets is what we sell. Uh, but oh, do people care more about the bullets than the beans? They sure do. The well, forever... America never changes, I suppose. Mm. America? Never heard of it. <laughs> Wait, what time period? <laughs> I, I have no idea. That's for the listeners. <laughs> it's yet to happen. Anyways, uh, but the beans, they, well, I think they're going to catch on. I've fried them in maple syrup. Mm. Fried beans. Fried beans in maple syrup. What a that concept. That sounds delicious. Yes. You can try some after you eat this entire chicken, which I am just <laughs> so excited to see. Do you have a chicken, Buttersby? Do you have a chicken? Well, my dear friend, first, if you would say my name correctly, it is Clarence B. Butterson. Oh, p- pardon me. Wow. Well, here, I have some money. <laughs> he just gives you some money. <laughs> Why, thank you. Where I come from, we love money. Anyways, uh, I want to get this uh, chicken industry oh, off so the ground. Oh, that's so I love money, too. Maybe we could <laughs> hang out and talk about money. Now, my goodness, who we... is this little seashell here? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the, like, you know, in, like, the Looney Tunes cartoons where they do, like, the awooga and, like, the eyes, like, pop out with hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, my goodness, Sugar Plum, when did you come into town? So you're saying that, okay, wait, what's your character's uh, name? Clarence B. Butterson. Butterson. So Butterson's type is haggard women? Yes. All right. I, I, guess I feel like you'd have to at a certain like time period. Yeah, he wants like it. like he's really into like you know like trailer park ant type thing. That's his type. Wow, he's a, he's really ahead of his time being Truly. into trailer park ants in like 1885. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe well, the, the spirit of that. Maybe you just like live above the local pharmacy and are addicted to like codeine cough syrup. <laughs> Yeah, you have yeah. that nice rasp to your voice. I feel voice. like that's one of the main things you did in 1885. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, like I go and I take uh, Kelly's hand like very delicately and just like get down on like one knee and give him a nice kiss on there. Whose hand? Sorry. Uh, you didn't say your name. Yeah, you didn't. I did. She asked, Aunt who, Susan. She asked you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I grab Aunt Susan's uh you know, papered thin hand in mine. <laughs> Dry. Uh, another feeble character for Kelly yes. to play. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm definitely. Oh really? I'm good at resilience. Whatever. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like I'm in feeble but resilient. Yeah, and you're recently single. Yeah, that's Ooh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Aunt Susan is kind of always recently single. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Spooky. Yeah. Actually, and the Aunt Susan is mostly. Not so much single in the recent past, but in the distant future. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because all of her relationships are now like chronologically ahead of her. Oh. Ah, yeah. Calendar that wise. Is true. Yeah. Sorry. What, okay. So you take my hand and do what? I, I just give you a nice, a nice kiss on it, a gentlemanly kiss. Oh, what a gentleman. You never meet gentlemen where I come from, which, which is uh, around here. No, it's one town over. You never meet gentlemen one town over. Well, my exotic little flower, I'm looking forward to meeting you more. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, I get up and kind of dust myself off, but I'm, I'm very interested in Aunt Susan. Yeah. Oh, oh that much is clear. <laughs> I feel like, uh, oh man, I feel like I'm at risk of like sweating profusely already because like, I don't think I've ever been charmed like this. I don't think Aunt Susan's ever been approached like this. Sorry, Miss Susan. This odd accent of yours. You said a, a very confusing word earlier. I was wondering if you could tell me what it means. Well, yes, oh, what, I remember you what, saying what, something what strange that? as well. Anachronism. Yeah, yeah. Could you define that for me? Oh yeah, I had a friend. She was uh she was from the it was Czechoslovakia. She's from the 
Austro-Hungarian Empire, and her uh, name was Anna. Everyone like smiles in uh, uh, a yeah. fine empire. Yes, <laughs> very far away. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, oh, it's it sure is one of the empires. It definitely won't turn into any uh, Nazis. So okay, um, uh, Anna Cronism. She was my uh, she was my uh, my friend from uh, Austria, or possibly Hungary, or possibly Czechoslovakia. <laughs> if any of those ring a bell for you. Hmm. Sir, hmm. they do not. Okay, well, <laughs> you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm, I was in the city for a bit. I'm forgetting my country manners. She was from, uh, she was from the old world. Mm. Yeah, so it's just a name. Yeah, and she and always talked crazy. about things that didn't quite make sense. So every time I, every time I have a little oopsie, I forget what I'm talking about. I say, oh, that's an anachronism. <laughs> I kind of, yeah, I have a little laugh about it. I like to have a little laugh. You know, you have to. <laughs> have to in this period of time i mean in a in a place like this you know there's not a lot of uh not a lot of entertainment <laughs> certainly not this is a town of murdering folk and bloodthirsty uh gentlemen looking to prove themselves so entertainment is at the bottom of the list of things that are oh hey what's that oh i was hoping you'd finish your sentence what does it say <laughs> There's not sufficient disk space to continue recording. Okay, well, <gasps> let's let's check where we've actually been recording to. <laughs> All right, well, everything's just we're still going. So where were we? You were in the middle of explaining something. Uh, yes, beans. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> type of beans. They're maple beans. Oh, you're trying to get me to eat a chicken. I would love to see that. <laughs> Do you have a chicken? Do, Do you- I have a chicken? What a question. A man who sells chickens who doesn't own chickens. Could you imagine? Okay, so I just like kind of open my jacket and I have like a selection of chickens. So you're like a watch salesman? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I have like drumsticks on the top and then I have wings. Oh, prepared chicken. Yeah, like I don't actually have like the full, you know, they're they're already in pieces and ready to go. Excuse me, do you have a full chicken? Yes, that was the conditions of the challenge, I believe. An act of manliness. That I'm, I'm sorry. What what did you say? A whole chicken, not the chicken hole. A whole <laughs> chicken. Ah, uh, my, my mistake. My mistake. Oh, the chicken hole. That's a bar I used to drink at. A Gross. bar. <laughs> I mean, what a saloon. A oh, a saloon. Sorry, it's. I picked up a lot of that Austro-Hungary, uh, Austro-Hungarian terminology. Ah, yes, I can imagine the accent over the A now. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Bah, yeah, bah. yeah, it's uh, it's Austrian for saloon. Ah, yes. L- I've been to an Austrian Hungarian L- L- saloon. L bar, they call it. Ah, yes. And Susan, I'm uh, I'm impressed by your worldliness. Well, hell, you know, I I have been known to travel, uh, much farther than you might imagine. I wonder if she travels in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Maybe she'll no, travel with two gentlemen mean. simultaneously in the bedroom. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Now, now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. So, hey, what do you mean it? him and him? Well, sh- yeah, well, <laughs> Dr. Beans doesn't <laughs> mind watching. Yeah, well, you know, I like to... I, I, I like a good rugged man, and uh, you know I don't mean buying watch. Be I don't mind being watched by uh, you know a sort of uh, strange uppity uh, Weasley man. Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you know, be, bean selling and bullet selling doesn't leave a lot of time for working out or any sorts of physical well, yeah, activity. Like- uh, yeah, as you can tell by how slender I am. And he finally opens up his coat and he's like, maybe 90 pounds. <laughs> but he is six feet tall. So wow. Like, during <laughs> this right. like conversation, I've been kind of like rustling through like my bags and stuff. And like I, I pull out like a briefcase. It's the good stuff. Um, and I put my like my little coat in it and pop it. And when I open it, it's kind of like that, like, oh, like, you know, like when you open like a chest and like the Zelda Dr. series Beans covers his eyes. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, sorry, it's when, bright in there. In my travels, see, I've always been amazed at what people can hold in the satchels. Like they hold really improbable amounts of like meat and bullets. It's crazy. <laughs> you never knew you could fit so much in a satchel. Wow, beautiful, skins, beautiful you know? and observant. <laughs> we often get food poisoning and spend days, <laughs> days on end, just unable to get out of our bed. <laughs> yes, we'd, wanna, have, we'd uh, have to all stay in bed together. Excuse me, Mr. Steele, could you run that one by me again? 
you shit and puke in your bed for days after eating the chicken that has been stored in the briefcase for days, weeks my, on end. My yes. lord, my lord, and with this knowledge, you're still going to eat it. That's just how manly I am. <laughs> wow. I, I am absolutely floored by this proposition. Let's do it. Okay, well, I've, I had the briefcase of chicken. and yeah. um, We're going to roll for this chicken. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, do, you have, do you have any advantages or disadvantages of any mm -hmm. character? I'm good at. Wait, you're um, not going to tell him what to roll first? Are you just going to like cherry pick his no, disadvantages? No, these really matter. I'm oh. bad at strength and good at bravery. Like, what what would matter here, do you think? I, I think like resilience. I don't have it. You don't have it? Or you're not bad at it, though, <laughs> no, right? No, nothing. All right, just a standard. I guess we don't have a Bravery, dice intimidation, can, so. reaction, yeah, you good, can intelligence, stealth, strength. All right, I mean, I'm, you can just hold your phone above the dice tray and... Oh, yes, that would be nice. All right, I'm going to roll for your uh, resilience okay. to endure this. Uh, it is quite hot out. This, this sweaty. Soup. At least it will be like more appropriate temperature while I'm eating it, you know? Yeah, it'll be like above room temperature. Oh, very nice. A 10. Uh, yes, describe how you eat this chicken and... and uh, so I, I dig in first. I basically like rip the wing off the side and I eat all the meat uh, and the cartilage and I actually like break the end off and start slurping the bone marrow out of all of the uh, oh, various bones of the chicken and just like with my bare hands start like like ripping like the breast meat off and like pull the carcass open and like pull the heart out of the chicken and eat that you go all the way. Damn. So you you ate you ate the bones before the meat. <laughs> yeah, that's that that is that is badass as hell. Yeah, so yeah, you managed to like scarf down this chicken in a very unconventional way, and Doctor Beans is just like, he, you know, you saved him a seat, but he only needed the edge. <laughs> he's he's just he's just in it, and he's like, wow, Ten. wow, <laughs> but he starts taking notes. He's like, jeez, I've eaten the bones first. That's smart. Mighty on, wow, oh, he's just floored. Sure, 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 sure. Every time you do something, sure. And Susan's like figuring this is like a colloquialism has her pick up. She's like, oh, sure, 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 you know, sure, like, oh, it, yeah. sure. Yeah, they're all sure at each other. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, yes, and you, you, as you finish your like last bite, and it is finger licking good. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you kind of feel like. You know, you should have gotten food poisoned, but you you feel like more energetic and powerful than mm. you ever have in your your young male adult life. My That's young the male spices. female adult, adult life. life. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, great. Yeah, and uh, actually, well, that uh, simply was delicious. Why? Well, I expected it to be, and I, I close it. I'm, I'm honestly kind of like I'm a little bit horrified by like how we <laughs> ate it. I just kind of am like dabbing my face with a napkin, like oh goodness. <laughs> Is it a handkerchief? Yes, a white mm. handkerchief. <laughs> Is it like kind of discolored and yellow and gross? At this point now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> Great. Susan tries to dab her face with a napkin, but she gets confused getting you know blending in with cowboys. By the time she tried to blend in with like her nieces and nephews, and grabs a napkin and starts doing this. She's just dabbing, just dabbing, dabbing yeah. her face with the napkin. And there's another mm. thing that won't scan at all if you're just listening to this. But <laughs> and uh, yeah, and there's a there was a you're do, you're doing this all in the, the the street right now. And there was a there was a guy. Uh, he's got like a, a like a classic sheriff's mustache, like mm. the thick thick kind of like curled one, like and a young Stalin mustache, a like young Stalin, like mustache. a Tomas mustache. Yeah, and he was uh, he was on a. That's rocket. the reference point that I think uh, casual listeners will help. Or will enjoy like yes is the Tomas mustache yeah the, this character looks like Tomas for everyone who's yeah. listening um yeah and he was on his rocking chair and uh, he was uh, he was uh, ch uh chewing on some tobacco and uh he's like hey you and he looks directly at Flint Steel yes you think you're some sort of tough guy eating a chicken backwards and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, I think I am the toughest guy in this town. Well, really? <laughs> and he, like, he, like, lurches forward as the, the rocking chair creaks, and he reveals his full height of five foot six. <laughs> 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 and he, he pulls up his belt, and he walls towards you, and he's like, well, I reckon I'm the tough, toughest guy in this street right now, and if you eating chickens backwards and shit, I take that as a direct challenge to my honor. What are you going to do about it? 
what am I gonna do about it? And uh, yeah, he just pulls out a knife. He's like, I'm gonna cut you like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wow, everyone's so out masculine my gun. back in this time. I pull out my gun and point it at him. Do you have a gun? Is he, is he, is yeah, he like, yeah, yeah, is he lunging yeah. at me? Uh, no, he was just like kind of like standing beneath you, threatening, threatening you with this knife. I'm like a sharpshooter. Yeah, you, he has a gun. I have a gun. Yeah, sure, I'm yeah. a gunslinger. Yeah, yeah that'd be weird. I hold it like this, of course. Well, looks like you've brought a gun to a knife fight, <laughs> sir. Or maybe I brought a knife to a gun fight. Who's to say? I should make that into a saying of some sort. Mm. Less half full or half empty, basically. <laughs> yeah. Aunt Susan is just quietly internally realizing that she could invent all kinds of like sayings and slogans, like finger looking good and <laughs> yeah. bringing a knife to a gun. And people fight. would be like, wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, just like a really low stakes uh, biff, like instead of winning all the money in the world, it's like, I'm just going to coin some phrases. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, this is like you're, you're like uh, trying to intimidate him. Yep. Yeah. Are, are you good at that? Yep. I've, I'm good at oh, intimidation. Oh, fuck yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. Um, he definitely like he was he was walking. Thank you. He was walking towards you with this knife. He's like, and he kind of like he takes a little a quick second. And he's like, what? And he's like, and he looks around and like uh one of his friends on a, another rocking chair beside him. And he like kind of looks at him and he raises an eyebrow. He's like, kind of like <laughs> judging his friend. He's like, well, yeah, well, mm, I mean, uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair to shoot an unarmed man now, would it? It wouldn't, but. You have to tell me that I am tougher than you. I will you absolutely leave. never do that. I'm, I'll okay, be you, right back. Get just, on out of here, I'm you a, idiot. I'm, I'll be back, damn it. <laughs> and he like stomps his like little uh, size eight feet <laughs> along the along the dirt path. You've kind of like disarmed him from now, but he, he, he did say he was coming back. I look on past this well below average man <laughs> walking off into the distance. Yeah, it looks kind of funny. He's making a real huff about it. I'm right and fat and I'm right and frick. So he's just Yosemite Sam. Yeah, he's basically Yosemite Sam. Yeah. <laughs> he goes down the street <laughs> shooting his guns into the air. He's so mad. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, you kind of like managed to disarm disarm this man, but he did say he's coming, he's coming back. Oh, Diz, coming back. Oh, no, I've had... Listen, okay, everybody calm down. I've had a lot of exes tell me the same thing. So what we need to do is... Uh, and, and Susan quickly realizes that all of her coping strategies are like extremely modern, like like live streaming Breathe. her ring doorbell and like consistently <laughs> like tagging the police on Twitter. And um, God, what else? Like I just hashtag the police. <laughs> <laughs> just just like she's just like Ed, Ed Susan, like the worst they sting for is anyone like so around tired. Day, and Susan got a Twitter account <laughs> and she's just like every time there's like a person that she considers to be threatening to rob her house, which is like anyone who looks young or poor or not white walking by her front. She's just like, like posts a picture and puts it on Twitter and tags like at FBI. So, <laughs> so she's realizing, I think that uh, none of her, her skills are useful here in the old West. And yeah. it's like, Oh, we have to, uh, Oh no oh, shit. I got to get this. Get, and she grabs a, a, a wine bottle or no a whiskey bottle, obviously, and just smashes it on the bar. Like just like a primal instinct kicks in. Oh, whoa, whoa. Fasty one, huh? Ain't she? <laughs> and he looks over at, um, but butters, butters more, but, 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 but more, but, but more butters and butters. Sorry. Christ. Is that fasty little critter? Ain't she? <laughs> That she is. That, that she, she is. is. Wait, so we're, we're in the bar then? We're, the bar was uh, where the no, whole fight happened? Or? The street still. But the yeah, street there'd still. just be a whiskey bottle on the ground. Why not? Yeah, I mean, all right. Yeah, people are all yeah. alcoholics in the yeah. Old West. Yeah. yeah. There's just empties everywhere. They don't have a recycling program. That, and they That's, sure don't. No. <laughs> Hope those haven't been invented yet. To clean that up. So what are we What are we doing <laughs> in this incredible. town? What are we trying to... <laughs> Sorry? What are we doing in this town? What are we... Yeah, well, um, uh, Flint, Flint, uh... Tough time to remember ever. Flint Steel? Flint Steel. Do you want a pen and write some things down? Yeah. No, I'm just fucking free balling it. You have um, a notebook. Like I, this I is it's very on. useful for and this is your pen, I think. It is. Yeah. Thank you. Um yeah, like Flint Steel is aware of like there's some sort of like uh 
magic to be earned in this town by like doing manly things. And um, I've been he, very manly up got, until this got, point. He's got a, he's got, he got a little bit, of, a little taste of it. Um, when uh, he ate that entire chicken backwards, and and then disarmed this uh, this this man who was like assaulting him. You feel power, you're you're one inch taller. Like literally one inch taller. We're literally one inch taller. Uh, I don't know how tall I was before. But you're plus one of that now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, like Cl- Clarence is like really into trying to uh, impress Aunt Susan. So he's yeah, just I think like. It was like some, some manliness of seducing a woman. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think so. Especially Being a sex she pest is a classic manly act. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A Pepe Le Pew type character. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Doc, Dr. Beans, what what is there to do in this here uh, town? Maybe we could get up to some uh, little bit of fun activities all together? Well, I'm thinking of a fun activity that I could get involved with right now, but let me <laughs> let me f- forebode my, my baser instincts and perhaps give you a little tour of this town. Uh, there's, sure. Sure. Uh, there's, there's much to do. Um... Not in the ways of entertainment, but there's a there's a there's a gun range where people be shooting bottles and cans of beans and stuff. Yes. Of course, provided by Beans and Bullets Emporium. Of course, of course. Um, there's the there's the 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 uh, ho- the horse the horse racing area horse. where people like to horse <laughs> horse around and race. <laughs> That's a manly thing to do. And uh, <laughs> of course, there's the saloon where people get drunk. Well, that is three amazing choices, but I think we should leave it up to this little lady here. Oh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I've, I've watched some, mo- oh shit, wait, I, I've watched some plays. No, wait, do you have, mo- never mind. I've, I've, I've watched some performances by some actors and, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. The part where you break the bottle is the only part I know. I don't really, I don't really know how, how to wield it. So I guess I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think we should get out of here before anybody comes back. Well, sure, of course, uh, a woman of such fine and delicate features wouldn't be suited to a life of violence. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, presumably the uh, the buff of acting manly kind of works inversely, invoicely on me. <laughs> so I would assume that I have to be more, well, either more feminine or more cowardly if I want to... Uh, Obtain the magical powers, is that right, uh, Dr. Beans? Well, I don't know if becoming more feminine is even possible for such a sunshiny, glittering diamond like yourself, but I suppose... Oh, I'm wilting like a flower! (laughs) (laughs) Wilting, (laughs) wilting. Oh, I'm rotten like a fish. Uh, I'm dying, your flower is killing me, it's killing me. Well, sure. I reckon that something like that could be possible. You could get a permanent debuff by being a coward. (laughs) Oh, that's good to know. I'll make a note of that. I don't have a pen, but you know. Well, here, little lady. And he he uh, he pulls a pen from uh, his pocket. Oh, we have pens in this time. Excellent. That's right. So America has not yet become, but we do have pens. If I, if I take my DeLorean back into, like, an alternate timeline? <laughs> oh, yes. yes oh, shit, okay. It's going to be really tough for Aunt Susan. Yeah. She's actually really well-read in history. She's just been so thrown off by the anachronism. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I read just, I was right. Just before you guys can decide a... what to do, you hear, uh, hear from the distance, like, the, the town bell, it strikes, strikes noon, hmm. and an ominous bell kind of echoes out, and you hear in the distance, Hey, you! Is it high noon? It is high noon. Uh-oh. <laughs> So wow, all wow, these people wow. were like, "You're trying to be like, extra man, mutilating yeah. themselves, <laughs> getting into fights, like uh, slugging whiskey, like everything that's happened so far was this, all like 11, 10 a.m. This is Red Dead Redemption. People wake up and start drinking and <laughs> yeah. start fighting. It's just how it works. And uh, yeah, you you kind of turn around and you see this uh, a very small shadow cr- oh, creeping no. towards you." <laughs> <laughs> Five foot nothing shadow. Oh, he's even smaller now. Yeah, yeah, he lost an inch. Oh, no. He's five foot five. He lost you, six you, inches. You stole his inches. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm looking for the man what stole my inches. <laughs> I reckon you can't shorten me much more <laughs> without me withered away to nothing. So it's something to die for. You ready to draw, you bitch? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm ready to draw, you small, withering, coward dwarf of a man. Oh. Yeah, call him a coward. Great one. Yeah, roll intimidation again. That's what you're doing. Yeah. And you and like you're not even making eye contact with him. You're just looking at his shadow, and you could see it like kind of like creep towards him. <laughs> and you and you feel a little bit even taller. And he's like. Look here, I'm not about to just wither away and die like a coward. I either got to fight you now or just turn into literally nothing. Okay, and, how, uh, how does a duel work in the Old West? Oh, in this uh, in this timeline? Yeah. In this timeline. <laughs> in this timeline. Well, I will uh, prepare you for the duel. Now, of course, everyone knows that the duel has to be declared by a beautiful woman. A beautiful woman has to stand upon this podium. And oh shucks, we'll have to find a beautiful woman. Hey, is that beautiful woman? <laughs> oh my, she is so modest. Modest indeed. Another flattering feature of Aunt Susan, the most beautiful woman I in find our it presence tiresome. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me shoot this fucking short idiot. <laughs> oh, he's like, hard to get. I find him the most appealing. Oh damn. <laughs> that, that that that's what she says in her internal monologue. Oh, okay, which sounds exactly like her own voice. Yeah, well, I know. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Well, I mean, the conventions of the duel could be. Uh, they they must be a bit bitten by. Aunt Susan, would you please do the honor, stand on this podium, and and uh and uh take this shot of whiskey to <laughs> begin the duel. Oh, you mean me? Oh, I'm swooning so hard. She's swooning so hard. <laughs> She's really man, yeah. Oh, of course. And she kind of like, uh, man, I don't know. What, what what would she do on the way to the podium to kind of like be be hotter? Yeah, is like, she like, like fanning I, herself with her hand, like in the way that a paunchy dude might like cover up his paunch with a pillow and like press really hard on the pillow to like, you know, make his arms look bigger. What am I doing to kind of like tart myself up? <sighs> I think Susan. she she kind of probably just be like you know like pulling up her little leggings and like you know I guess you dusting off her Skechers kind of thing like just She'll you like know fluff her hair out you know like the, oh yeah 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 she might be wearing Skechers honestly it's <laughs> not it's not impossible she's wearing like a big like old timey gown but as soon as she kind of like bustles it up it's like oh shit I'm wearing Skechers I can't do this <laughs> and then so she just kind of like. She just kind of just pushes up on her tits. She doesn't know what else. To do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like hey, that, yeah, boys? Oh, I bet you've never <laughs> conceived of these before. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Dr. Beans is going to resist Char- getting an erection. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and it is clear as the day that, <laughs> as uh, it's clear as the sun is today at high noon that Dr. He, Beans is fully gored. He, he, he got a four? Noon. I got a four. That's very <laughs> coincidental because Dr. Beans, he's, he's rocking a four. He's rocking <laughs> a four. I've heard. All, all, heroic, all four heroic inches of my member are Jeez. fully engorged. <laughs> he just announces that. <laughs> yeah, he just says it out. But not to anyone in particular. Like He just says it to himself. Oh, to the roof. I feel like I've really found the place where I belong. Everyone <laughs> is just speaking the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Aunt Susan, roll... Uh, Resilience to take the shot of whiskey. Okay. And start the duel. I like how the dice tray is nowhere near any of the players. Yes. It's perfect. Well. Yeah. Good throw. Yeah, no. No. Yeah. That's uh, Aunt Susan. You 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 don't. Are you mm. a drinker, Aunt Susan? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember because originally Aunt Susan was a Mormon. Oh yeah. Okay. So and not experienced in the yeah, well, then, but she was really, but she also was really into the Vicodin. Okay. Um, so, like, so maybe, I'm, I'm trying to think of how I square that. I guess she was just sort of like. She was breaking her tradition. Well, it's like one of those people who thinks that like, you know, like like the poophole loophole Catholics. Oh, like pharmacy drugs are for good. Right. Good yeah, for it's you. like codeine. If, if the drug didn't exist when uh, their prophet Joseph Smith was around. Um, then it can't be like prohibited by God because you know it's Plus, not. It's legal. It's not it's in legal. The, if it's not in the Book of Mormon, then Susan is very law abiding. Yeah. yeah, you can drink Diet Pepsi and eat Vicodins as a Mormon. I eat Vicodins, not yeah. have Vicodin or a Vicodin. No. But yeah, Vicodin. I feel like all they. Like I mean, this is like this is this is kind of peak Mormon time. So she's probably Canon- try- canonically in this universe. Yes. Yeah, well, and she's probably gonna try to downplay that. So I don't. Maybe she's going. Maybe she's gonna try her first 
drink of alcohol. Because really, you are about to vomit. I feel like I'm... <laughs> oh, right, because I'm on the verge. Yeah. Oh, no, you are... Yeah, you're going to vomit now. All right, here's what I want to do. Yeah. Because I'm trying to blend in. I may or may not be a Mormon. I feel like I'm going to eat shit later when I realize in some other episode I said Aunt Susan was like something else. Uh, but I, th- I think what Aunt Susan's going to try to do is like take a sh- get a shot and like stand near the plant and kind of try to pull a return to Zork where sh- she's like, oh, yeah, like let's yeah, she's going to do a toast and then she's going to try to pour it into the plant. Uh, and like pretend like she did a shot. Oh no, you've 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 already taken the shot. You rolled resilience to not vomit. So you are I'm just giving you an opportunity to like vomit somewhere or do something sneaky, maybe to you know keep these uh these two these two rich, rich men from you know maybe not being so attractive to you. Oh, okay. Well then I'm gonna go try to vomit demurely in the plant. <laughs> Demir- what does that sound like? <laughs> Blah. <laughs> <laughs> Blah. Blah. Blue <laughs> comes out as like one blob. Bloops. Just one big blob of vomit. <laughs> yeah. Wow, even when she vomits, she's just radiant. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's what that's what I rolled for was I already took the shot? Yeah. Man, I gotta I gotta get back on my meds or something. It's just all <laughs> over the place. All right. But that that did signal the, the 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 time of the duel, and you both draw your arms and draw. Draw. And do you want to do anything like cool or sneaky? Or- and I, I stand here with I'm my gonna- like Pull it Quill out. or pen and paper drawing their arms because I think that's manly. <laughs> nice. They're ripped. a gunslinger, you know? Like, do we have to take, like, three steps away from each other, turn around and draw, or are we just, like, looking she at She just each took other? a shot and, like, you guys are staring at each other. Okay, I'm just, just gonna, like, draw. <laughs> just straight up. Just straight wow. up. Shoot Classic hip. execution. Classic. As efficient as possible. Yeah, and you do you do a good job. And <laughs> he, like, he, he goes to draw, but, like, because he had lost so much size, he like goes to draw and his like pants <laughs> just like fall it. down. And uh, he's like, he's miss, he's like, all oh, my proportions are different. And bang, he gets it right, right, right in the dome. You just, oh, dome, wow, domeless man. And he falls to the, the ground and he's, he's dead. And, uh, yeah, people, you've kind of like drawn a crowd at this point and they're like, that, that, that was one of the, that was one of the tougher ones. This this guy right here, and you're d- definitely still taller. You're like, I'm like five foot nine now. Yeah, yeah, yeah at least, at least. And, I uh, feel like Aunt Susan, who has never actually been exposed to physical violence, only like the hypothetical violence she experiences from the like teenagers and poor people's and minorities walking past her house. She's watched like CSI Miami or something. I feel like it's different when you see it for real. Yeah, and absolutely. I feel like she's starting to panic, and like so no one noticed her vomit in the plant. That you're saying. Oh no no! Uh, they, they were noticed, turned they liked, on by they it. liked it. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, because you did it demurely, <laughs> right? I I just think that I I she feels really freaked out and wants to get the fuck out because someone's just been murdered. She's yeah. like, oh, it was oh. consensual murder. She, at yeah, least. well, but like, you know, when you just kind of go into like fight or flight mode and like yep. you're you're not using your frontal cortex anymore. So that's she's probably just like, how I she's yelling feel. out loud yeah, like at FBI, at FBI, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's she just wants to run out the door. Like this is not a good scene for her. Oh god, oh god, does somebody? I gotta, I gotta fix the DeLorean. I gotta go. Why well, should want the farrier and buckle inspector? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, Susan, this is no time for horsing around and inspecting buckles. A man's died. We have to we have to respect a consensual duel. So charmed suddenly by this man's uh gravitas and uh his composure in the moment, Aunt Susan goes, Oh yes, that's right. DeLorean, the farrier and the other thing. The what was inspector. it? And and Dr. Beans is is so into Aunt Susan, he's like, that that's right. <laughs> he just he just plays it off. He's like Right, the the DeLorean, the farrier and buckle inspector. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Oh, I was just doing a oh maybe we don't have bits. I was just doing a horse around. Yeah, let's ah, yes, uh, let's do exactly what you were saying, which is uh, you know, the correct funeral rites. Okay, so Clarence has been kind of like watching all of this and he's like getting quite worried now because like he he really wants to attract Aunt Susan, of course. And now he's like, uh, you yeah, know, Dr. He's, Beans is really I don't, hustling on. You know, like I'm kind of falling behind here. So I'm trying yeah, to think Dr. Of what Beans to do. is climbing her list of fuckable fascists. Yeah. Like. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I am one. <laughs> so I, I like, I take my little like uh, 
what, what do you call those things? The thing that you can take a little sip from. A little flask. S- flask. Yes, that yeah. thing. I take a little flask of my gravy and have like a quick sip of this stuff. a little sip of, sip of a lot yeah. of things. That's where right. you get a yeah. boost from drinking Get a little gravy. power up to give myself a little bit of sink here. Yeah, okay, you're going to get advantage on the next thing that you do. Good. All right. Um, my gentle Aunt Susan, let me tell you one of the most manliest things we could do in this town. The manliest thing we could do is bet on a goddamn horse race. <laughs> <laughs> do you seek yourself as a betting man, Dr. Beans? I, don't, I reckon I didn't get this successful by not taking risks, so I am a man of wages and gambling and sorts and drinking and spitting and sorts. How many inches would you bet? I would bet all four. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that, I've, this will, this I'm will. just a simple country girl. What exactly does that mean? How does oh, that manifest? We are well in this town. You can wager the length of your peepee, <laughs> your peepee, your peepee, the, the the length of your member in a. Sure. What's oh. it, what exactly is at stake here? Do, you know what happens if you win? What happens if you lose? Well, I I have, as you can probably guess, won a couple, a couple of these competitions already. I sure. stand. At a, a sturdy four inches, but <laughs> are you I sure were, you weren't previously five? Pre, pre, uh, well, uh, it, it it comes and goes, you know. <laughs> Dick length, it comes and goes. You lose you know, some. You, it's you win what some. they say. It's not the number of inches; it's the sturdiness of each inch that counts. That's right, and each one is just magnificent. I I'm willing to wager all four. Oh, four. Well, should sure. we? Should we? Do you like, need some time to get some more inches before we wager? I was gonna or? say, should we? Because you have yours as four, so like, should should we roll? Oh, for everyone dick length? roll for dick length. Yeah. Okay. What am I rolling? Well, I mean, for? I guess that's just not you. Ants. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, got no, dick. No, no. I got a proverbial dick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could win one. You got a you metaphysical want. penis. Yeah. You could roll for the metaphysical penis too. Yeah. So yeah, big people. Everyone energy. roll for their. Roll for everyone size. thinks my dick is. Roll roll for tits and cocks. You got it. Oh, so wow. I got a ten. What is the like huge? Is that his dick? What is the equivalent of a ten-inch dick? She got of... massive mommy milkers. Oh, She's yeah. like oh, huge yeah. bazonkers. Yeah. That's the one thing really Aunt Susan definitely has going for her. Okay. Am I rolling two? Yeah, roll two dice. That's why Aunt Susan was like, I know no one's gonna have conceived yeah, of these so because got she's she's got implants. Yeah. They're like brand new implants too, like. They happen canonically after every other oh, appearance that, of her. That's so probably far. why she was wearing the boyfriend's outfit and just trying to look. Yes. You know, she's like, yeah, yeah he she could like fill it out. I look like that. Oh yeah. You want to roll for your pee pee? What about you? Oh, I've already, I've already established I have a four-inch hog. You're gonna make him stand up like that? You're not gonna roll for him? Metaphysical so ten, amazing. Great. You can, you can dispose that at your, however you see fit. Hmm. Everyone thinks my dick is nine inches you, long. Yes. You give off that energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So he's like kind of laughing. He's like, well, if you need to muster up some more inches before we wager, then I would understand. I laugh. Well, I'm, I kind of laugh. I'm like, well, I've got four to spare, but I'm going to put down eight. <gasps> <laughs> Twing! <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to roll for how fucking sick that is. Oh, it was super sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you definitely you 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 gain another inch. Yes. <laughs> Very manly. Uh Dr. Beans is like, well, 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 I suppose uh I can I have no more inches to wager if you could possibly <laughs> imagine such a situation, but I'd be willing to wager, perhaps. And I, Susan is not good at flirting, but she reaches over and she grabs Dr. Beans by the hand and is like, You can wager mine. She she does not understand what the inches is about. She's okay. completely yeah. missed out on this innuendo. <laughs> he like he like looks at you like. But she's trying well, to blend in. She's that, like, well, everyone's his betting inches, so I guess I should kind of just bet my inches and see how that plays out. Maybe yeah. we just won't lose and it'll be fine. And he stares longingly at Aunt Susan, but he 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 feels good about this race coming up. He's like, well, well, I will not mince words about it. We both have a keen interest in Aunt Susan, and uh, I would be willing to, uh bow my head out of this uh this love triangle that is developed how does that sound to you four inches and i will stop hitting on aunt susan <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> all right right on yeah so you guys like stroll over to the horse races unless someone doesn't want to do that but keeping the group together is nice 
I'm a horse whisperer, so like oh, I'll go yeah, horse you race. are. Oh fuck. Damn. I'm gonna try and fucking fix a horse fix. race. Oh yeah. Abs- oh, that's, shit. that's manly. That's me. Fixing a horse <laughs> race? Absolutely. Yeah, cool. You know what? My my daddy fixed horse races and my daddy's daddy fixed horse races. So <laughs> that's that's my model for masculinity. So this is internal. This is I'm gonna flip to internal monologue More again. Internal. You can't have my beer. Oh. <laughs> here, <laughs> here, drink my beer. Here, drink this. So uh, suddenly in my internal monologue is, you know, maybe this uh this uh Flint Steel character, maybe maybe this is the person to uh be my protector, whatever it is I want while I'm here. <laughs> Who knows? I'm, I'm not just sure going by what the seat I want. I'm still very disoriented and haggard. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna make up some horse names real quick here. <laughs> we're gonna get some. Uh, we're gonna get clippity cloppity, <laughs> clippity cloppity. Oh yeah, isn't that canonically you have a clippity cloppity? Uh, no. I think one it's of the characters did. Something stupid but... like that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you could do that. Like a what was it? Like the verb and noun. That's exactly or the, what we're going or not to do. Verb and noun, noun and adjective. All right. So. Uh, oh, you're gonna get us to generate your. Horse yes, name. we're gonna generate some horse. Oh names, shit! Right? Okay, I'm gonna do it. Sorry. Right. So clip clop. Uh, there. You know what? I just like that clip clop is on there. Um. <laughs> All right, so Sam, could you please uh, think of a verb? Or and, do you mean uh, one adjective and noun? I think. Oh yeah. Uh, wait, was it? Yeah, adjective. No, we're gonna do verb actually. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you're All the, right. you're the like, game master. Yeah. You can do whatever you All want. Right. A verb, verb. Think of a verb. Got one. Don't say it. And Kelly, think of a noun. Uh, okay. Um, a noun that would people would probably know in this time period, right? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> sure. Uh, why, or not. Whatever. It's a different timeline. Well, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to play it close to the something. OK, uh, I got it down. You got it. Yeah. OK, Sam. Pounding cactus. Pounding cactus is one of the worst <laughs> things. Lovely. All right. Let's do that again. Uh, Kelly, verb and Adam. Now tell me when you got it. Does, is it a gerund? Is it like an ing verb or? Uh, I think it would make sense to do an ing ing now. All right. Or verb. Um. Don't say it when you got it. Just hold on to it. Hold it in your mouth. Yes, wash it around in your mouth a bit. Get the flavors of it. Do you want it? Yes. All right, I got one. All right. Sure. Sure. All right. Twirling. Boathouse. <laughs> <laughs> Twirling boathouse. All right, and uh, verb and noun. One more horse. Um. Okay. And a verb ending in ing. Stomping gravy. <laughs> Stomping gravy. Nice. I know who I'm then. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you roll up to the the horse races, and there's a there's a guy kind of like taking wagers. There's a bunch of guys like throwing cash at him. You're like, oh yeah, twenty two on clip clop. All right, that's right. And the third thirteen on pounding cactus. Twirling boathouse is a show of a uh, fine steed. Oh, we got fifty over here. And he's like, uh, he's just like taking taking bets from everyone. And uh. Yeah, so these are your options for your, your horses to bet on. Clip clop, pounding cactus, twirling boathouse, and stopping gravy. I walk up confidently immediately and put eight inches on stomping gravy. Wow, eight inches! Eight inches on stomping gravy! <laughs> this is turning out to be an exciting <laughs> horse race, folks! Stay so tuned! So that's not a personal bet, that's like a bet you make at the horse, like betting station yes yes it's <laughs> yeah. the only thing you bet in this like yeah. the manly no it has to be her. all done through Is like a uh, legitimate uh <laughs> business here it's not a personal wager everyone will know exactly what's going <laughs> who on who did you not bet on personal it's uh, business. the gravy one stomping okay, gravy. Gravy. gravy yeah yeah and uh mr beans walks up and he's like eight inches on stomping gravy wow I didn't know you're that much of a wagering man. I'm obviously going on clip clop because that's the sound horses make. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to pull Flint Steel aside and be like, I'm gonna whisper really, you know, like quietly. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Steel. Wait, Mr. Steel. Everyone Mr. can hear it. Mr. Steel. What Which do you want? one are you? And I, do I notice that people are like turning to look at me? Do I like? Uh, uh, I'm gonna roll for uh, perception. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What am I? I'm good at perception. Roll me both. Oh yeah, you're ten. You're fine. All right. So I, I decide to. I really people can hear me, so I just kind of cut my hands on his ear. Well, oh, 
Okay, um, Mr. Steel, which horse are you? And I look around. Going to whisper to to fix the race. I don't really see how that's any of your business. Oh, I thought we were oh. friends. I thought we were a team. I thought you were going to be the one to rail me behind the saloon in my sundress. <laughs> <laughs> Is she wearing a sundress? Uh, I think you said. I feel like I'm wearing the old West equivalent of a sundress, which is those giant like uh, fucking frocks that touch great. the ground yeah, yeah. Um, and cover up my uh, my Skechers. I tell her, if you really must know, I'm gonna I'm going to bet five inches on pounding cactus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. And, uh, and are you doing that? Are you wagering? Yeah, I go up to the stall and I say, now, five I don't have any inches, so I'm going to be really bold, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to stride up to the hmm the like it's, it's probably like a ticket taker, right? Some kind of person. Uh, yeah, he's like he's he, I'm going to say he's like a somehow like a magical man who like he like he can take inches and give inches, <laughs> right? Like, but I don't have inches to give, so here's what I'm going to do. Or I, I don't, if I do, I don't know how your system works, but Aunt Susan doesn't believe she has inches to give. Because mm. oh. she's a, she's a very much like a rational materialist in terms of inches. She doesn't really, like, conceive of metaphysical inches. Right. So she's like, I, I got not an inch to spare, but I do. This is internal monologue again. Okay. I do have a time-traveling DeLorean, which, you know what? I'm kind of happy here. Maybe one of these unhappy people can... Uh, send themselves to the future or the past or whatever. And so what she's going to do is so she's, she's going to sidle up to the the, the bookie, the person yeah, taking it's back. It's just like, dicks and inches, right here, by dicks herself. And, inches. <laughs> and she'll, she'll, she's she's going to like flutter her really crusty eyelashes at him. Yeah, some dust kind of gets on him. Yeah, <laughs> and like kind of beckon him in closer. And she's going to say like, you there, you, uh, you take alternative bets? Uh, I deal mostly in inches, but what were you thinking, babe? Well, I'm feeling pretty confident in my bet, and, uh, would you pay out anything else, money? No, I take inches, I'll take inches, it's fine. Yeah, uh, but how many inches is this worth to you? And I put the keys to the DeLorean on the counter, and obviously he won't know what they are, but yeah. I'll say... What if I told you I had a carriage that was horseless? <laughs> he like he shudders. He's like, you've, you've rattled him. His, when he's like, what? what? And then he thinks about it. He's like, well, then I have to buy horses. <laughs> 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 what if I told you the horses were inside you in a sense? Jesus Christ. <laughs> In a sense. <laughs> Horses have a lot of inches. Yeah, that's right. Look, ma'am, I think uh, you're talking crazy talk to me. You're not making a lick of sense. Well, what if I offered this a as A horse inside me in a carriage with no horses. <laughs> then I get the horses out of me and into the carriage. What's the, what's the deal with that? Sure. <laughs> I want you to imagine you've got a carriage that will take you faster than any carriage would take you. All right, I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're, you're taking the bet. It's fantastic. Oh, I no, was going no, to show it. you these as collateral, but I guess I won't. Never no, I'm mind. just imagining a carriage going really fast. Yeah. Yeah, and you won't have to feed it carrots. Or whatever you feed horses. What the fuck are you talking about, lady? <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what you're talking about. You're talking about, like, horses inside of him and, like, <laughs> and, like a carriage that can go fast, but he's like, it doesn't make a lick of sense to him. Well, look, are you taking the bet or not? You're not. I'm not. A, no, and then I no. remember the currency of this town. I go, oh, you're not some kind of a non-manly man, are you? No, I'm the manliest man around. I can get dicks and, and distribute them how I see fit. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get. But I do it you honorably wanna, you through gambling. Wanna, you wouldn't want to be emasculated by a woman with no dick at all. Uh, of course, a woman with a dick. Could you even imagine? Yeah, and the largest tits you've ever seen. You wouldn't want to get emasculated by these. And I rip my uh, shirt open and I kind of show her, I show him my 
uh, my tits, which are implants, so like they're just unlike anything he's ever seen. Holy moly, those are gigantic! <laughs> and there's more where that came from, and I, you know, close up. You, you have more? Well, you where are, are they? You're asking a lot of questions for a man who's not taking my bet. I'll take a bet if I get to squeeze your boobs. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> sure. Sure, all right. I let him have, like, one honk. One honk? One honk will get you two inches. <laughs> <laughs> What's the what's the payout? What's the payout in inches on this? Which horse am I betting on again? Which, which I don't know. We haven't gotten that far. <laughs> what? Pounding cactus. Pounding cactus. Thank you, Mister Fucking uh... <laughs> Flint Steel. Oh, you haven't asked my Mr. name, Mister Flint Steel. I don't give a shit about your name, you peon. I take my damn <laughs> bet. All right. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm having a. I've been having a really weird day. You seem very nice. Um, no, no, I'm a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, steal and, I steal and redistribute dicks, and I want to squeeze your tits. <laughs> <laughs> and I also, I, I run a gambling ring. <laughs> There's nothing great about me. Sure, those are the three most perverted things you can do. Oh, you don't even know the half of it. Okay, so uh, uh, is, our, uh, is our bet finalized? Yeah, sure, sure, tits. How okay. many hogs are you willing to wager? <laughs> I'm willing to wager. Okay, you're saying one honk for two, two inches? inches? Yes. How many inches am I going to need to, like, I don't know, put a down payment on in a nice farmstead, homestead, whatever? Ah, oh, well, uh, I reckon 10 inches will get you started. What's the, what's the odds on? I asked you what the odds are on the cactus horse. What? The odds? The odds are, uh, pound, pound and cactus love, uh, you ne your never won. Away. He's never won. So the odds should be really good. They are good. Well, I mean, like, the payout, like, 14 to 1. Sure, why not? I'd love to get past this part where I'm done talking to you. And All right. These horses start running. <laughs> I'm just going to put down enough honks that the 14 to 1 will buy me a house. Sure, done. <laughs> a bunch of inches. Okay, I'm just going to close my eyes and you take the honks you need on a system. Well, no, the, 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 the honks will come later. Okay. We have to wait for the horse race, which we everyone has been waiting for. With much oh, you only want the honks. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, I take the keys back and put them in my pocket. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that carriage. <laughs> it's confusing to me. Sure. Oh, wow. This is working out way better than I thought. This doesn't cost me anything. Ah. This is more attention than I've had in years. <laughs> and Susan's just loving it. Yeah. Oh, All right, everyone. Sorry for the wait. Well, ready to start this horse race. Okay, so and I'm going to you... wander yeah. over to the the stables, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I'm going to try and like sneakily get into the stables and uh, whisper encouraging words into the the horse, like pounding cactus's ear to like kind of rile him up and get him like really excited to race. Yeah. And then do you do you whisper like discouraging words to the other horses? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna nice. I'm gonna like try oh, and spook really them stacking and, like, the deck. Really yeah. kind of. Oh. Uh, Nice. shit up with the other horses yeah and yeah. like this this almost feels like a thing that you might have to ro roll for but i don't know you're just like ho honing in with your uh your previous skills and it like, says i can instantly bond with any horse uh, oh yeah well it's it's done already but okay. uh yeah you, 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 you just feel like this like manly energy just pulsing through your your through your lips as you so as i'm stroking pounding cactus and telling him <laughs> to pound the earth and the cacti beneath his feet, just yeah. as his namesake suggests he and should. He gets more vascular. He, yeah, all the all the veins in his <laughs> <laughs> meaty horse body are just like throbbing through his weird surface yeah. horse skin. And yeah, okay. his, uh, his, I lean his over to Butterson, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, look how vascular yeah. that horse is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? I just leaned over to Butterson, and I, I said, look how vascular that horse is. <laughs> Okay, I go yeah. back to the, the yeah. stand. Sorry, and, I wanted you I to feel the involved. Horse race. <laughs> you hadn't said much in a while. Are you betting, Buddison? I already bet. I bet first. Oh, shit. She was very quick you and efficient what? with her wager. Uh, the thing is, I have a sort of dis... Oh, shit, that's also an acronym. Well, you know, <laughs> maybe someday someone will invent a tincture that will help me pay attention, but as it stands, I have a hard time paying attention, and I kind of just back out yeah. of the... You right could on. probably buy some like cocaine wine at the fucking pharmacy cocaine if you wanted. Wine. Oh, cocaine wine. Yeah, oh. of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a staple here. Well, I suppose this is. This is now internal Mullock. I suppose <laughs> this is before the time I was <laughs> baptized as a Mormon or however you become a Mormon. So, 
Uh, and now no, Susan is thinking quietly in her own head. There's no <laughs> rules against drinking yeah. wine, and I go over to get some cocaine wine. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're wandering off to get some coke wine, and you hear a gunshot go off. Bang! Bang. Oh shit! And uh, and the horses are off, and like undisputed victory. Like they like pounding cactus is like slobbering and is like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah that's how horses run <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it's different it's like it's like a like he's just doing like a like how like a tiger's like leap forward he's like frothing at the mouth yeah, yeah. he's like foaming oh my he's getting word getting a crazy pump as the other uh, as the other horse is just kind of like boo, spin in circles in his dust and uh Oh, Benning works is just like the first place person gets it all. No, it, like... it, d- it depends on like order and stuff. Yeah, okay, but... so we're going to figure out the order. Will you win money if your horse wins second place? It depends how you bet, because like there's different kinds of betting. You can bet for who wow. you think is going to be in like first, second, third. You can bet for like just first place. It just kind of like right. depends. Man, I don't know fuck all about horse betting. There's a horse betting thing here. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite fun. I Real mean, fun. if you want to come teach me to gamble, like show me how you bet your money, and uh, I'll I'll listen attentively. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll learn. So, uh, uh, pounding cactus just fucking destroys. Second place, stomping gravy. Yes. Third place, twirling boathouse, and in last place, click flop. Oh no. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the the order comes through, and uh, it's a massive payout to uh, good old uh, Flint Steel here. Get? Uh. And Susan is pumped up. She's screaming over the railing, like, "Yeah, off to the glue factory, clip clop. Do they have glue? <laughs> Shit, do they have glue?" And uh, yeah, it's a big payout. Yeah, you're getting you're getting mad inches. Off to the meat pack, as if not fourteen to one. So you did fourteen times five. Yeah. So that's ooh, ooh. seventy inches. Seventy x seventy inches wow. right then and there. And uh, yeah, Aunt Susan just bet a bunch. So I don't know. You get like a. A farmhouse's worth of yeah i immediately take my inches in for a farmhouse yeah, like totally dr beans just like like he takes off his hat and it's like stomping it like kind of like wario lost a race kind of thing it's like ah oh, damn ah oh, piss and shit and farts and stuff and That's uh, classically how i imagine a person stomping a hat i'm like yeah remember when wario lost that race <laughs> yeah like in mario kart he like throws his hat on the oh, grab, does he like, too? oh right out. i forgot about yeah. mario kart he's real mad i don't i don't recognize mario karts after mario kart 64 hmm Double dash fair. is the best. Oh, Double bad. dash, actually. Stupid. We'll talk about this later. Um, <laughs> and uh, stupid on stomping gravy. I did. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. And yeah. Susan turns to a random person yeah. next to her. Can you imagine how stupid the horse races would be if there was like one person riding the horse and one person on the back doing something else? Like, why don't you just have one person ride each horse? Racing's fine. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. She's wheel. just talking about horses. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a wheel. wheel. What's a wheel? All uh, their wagons are on like sleds and yeah, just like, dragging across the desert. Yeah. God, you know, I wish somebody would invent a better kind of wagon with some sort of, I don't know, a, 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 a less friction intensive kind of wagon. Oh, you're talking Crazy. nonsense. That's how our grandparents did it, and that's how their grandparents did it. That's how it. our grandchildren are gonna do it, dragging a sled across sand. That's right. Um, Sorry, what's Stop happening gravy. in the You game? got 30, 30 inches. Just arbitrary, whatever, fuck yeah. That's fine. Yeah, there you go. I'm quite, I'm happy with that. And Dr. Beans walks up to you and he's like, well, I've lost all of my honor <laughs> and, and uh, four inches as well. And I'm sorry, Aunt Susan, but this is where our paths must diverge. I, I cannot, I cannot chase you anymore. I've made a gentleman's agreement. I put a reassuring hand on the shoulder and say, "If it's any consolation, Doctor Beans, you were never really in the race." <laughs> <laughs> and he takes like you, are, you he are... takes like ten. 10 damage, like 10 psychic damage. <laughs> maybe, this, uh, do, do, do. maybe this will mean something to you one day, Dr. Beans, but you are what we call in what my friend calls in the Austro- Austro-Hungarian Empire a beta cuck. A beta cuck. Well. Hmm. Don't worry, it's endearing in its own way. Well, at least I've got my business. But yet again, sure. I search, search for love. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. They always say that, sure. And uh, he like looks down and he's like, well, I think I've had about as much as I can handle for one day. You're sort of getting a sure John letter. Uh, <laughs> tragedy strikes Dr. Beans hard once more. 
And uh, I, I bid you all do, and I hope you uh, do well. I'll just be selling beans until I can afford more inches so I can sure. lose it all again on love. I, I feel like quite bad, actually, for for uh, Mr. Dr. Dr. Beans, um, even though I won because I, I, I'm a, you know, I'm a very gracious winner. Um, so I was like kind of thinking about like his how his business is going and stuff. And I was like, wait, wait, what, Mr. Beans, what? <laughs> you, you may not have won a lady. But you have one a friend. And I was thinking, beans and chicken belong together. Beans and chicken and bullets. How would you like to make a business deal? That's, that's right. And he's, he's like, he's, he like, he like, his hat was like crumpled to his chest. He's like, straightens up and he like, puts it back on. He's like, <laughs> well, I reckon this ain't so bad. Yeah, you you have a, you got a good selection of chicken and a good intuition on betting on horses. So, just like my last business partner, the Shirley, this won't go tits up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to. And he goes to shake your hand. I go to shake his hand too, and then I I open my thing and I I give him like a chicken drumstick. It's like like you give like a kid like a you know like cotton candy thing and send them off to the fair. Oh, I thought you were gonna it. put it in your palm and like. Oh, that would be cool like too, actually. But thing. no, that looks good. And he's like, "Well, to to business and friendship." And he uh, takes a bite of the chicken, and uh, yeah, making a business deal is manly. You you feel you feel a little bit more powerful as well. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! Everyone got what they wanted, and they learned a little about about their <laughs> manliest self. What do you uh? What do you think? Uh, I don't know why I can't remember this character's name because I invented it. Flint Steel. What do you think, Flint <laughs> Steel? What's your? Do you have a sort of uh, mo- Kevin Smith style Silent Bob monologue? You've been kind of brewing this whole time to really tie thing, close things off, and put so a my, button on the whole my story. Pants feeling... No, I'm not done interrupting oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> I also think you're very. Uh, a distressingly handsome in a Kid Rock kind of way. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to shut up now. So me annoyed at this uh, person's persistence at pursuing me and having no sexual interest in her because <laughs> I am uh, I am secretly a woman, even though I somehow have a now 79-inch cock. Are you, <laughs> are you saying that women can't be interested in women? Is that weird? No, I'm not. But my character is not. Okay. Uh, and it's not because uh, Susan... And Susan is a woman because, like, because uh, she's I, haggard. It's because, it's because <laughs> she, she's she haggard and annoying and desperate, and she won't stop chasing me. <laughs> I I look at her. You know, and, there's nothing manlier than recognizing insecurity and staying away from it and setting boundaries. So exactly. I really think that he that they win. So what yeah. I do, <laughs> what I do is I look her in the eyes and I reveal to her. I actually, I like walk up to her and I whisper in her ear that I'm secretly a woman and, <sighs> and I tell her that if she needs proof, I will provide it. Damn. That's a great place to end. I think. Yeah. That's, that's a little, uh, a little, that's a, that's a little act break. Yeah.